Hello and welcome to the first video in this three-part series designed to show you how to create your first Windows Store app. This series is based on the Create Your First Windows Store app step-by-step -step tutorials found at dev.windows.com and is divided into three parts. This video is part one. We'll be creating a simple Hello World Windows Store app using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We'll show how to create a new project. We'll build some basic HTML for a Hello World page and show how to handle a button click event. Next, we'll show how to switch between the built-in light and dark themes and how to create your own custom CSS styles. And finally, we'll show how to use the Windows library for JavaScript rating control. In part two, manage app lifecycle and state, we'll discuss the app lifecycle and we'll extend the Hello World app by storing app data in Windows roaming settings and saving session state data using the WinJS application session state object. In part three, page control objects and navigation, we'll migrate our app to use the navigation app template and page control objects, and we'll add an app bar to navigate between pages using the WinJS navigation service. I want to emphasize that the best way to learn is by doing. Don't just watch me write code. We designed this series so you can open up Visual Studio and follow along step by step. Before you start, to complete this tutorial, you need to have Windows 8 installed. A free 90-day evaluation of Windows 8 is available for download. You will also need to install a version of Microsoft Visual Studio 2012. You can download a free version of Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows 8 available from www.microsoft.com express. You will also need a developer license. You can obtain a developer license by selecting a file new project and building a Windows Store app or directly from the store menu select acquire developer license. Acquire developer license. Step one, create a new project in Visual Studio. The first thing we're going to do is launch Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows 8 just by typing the letter VS on the search pane and we see VS Express for Windows 8 and go ahead and click that. Now once this is open, select File, New Project and I'll just zoom in here so you can see it. Go ahead and select that and that'll show us the new project dialog. From here, make sure that the JavaScript Windows Store templates are selected and select the blank app template. With that selected, let's actually name our project Hello World. And you can choose whatever location you want to save it to. And I'm going to uncheck create a directory for the solution. And with all that set, let's click OK to start creating our project. With our project created, select Solution Explorer and you'll see that we built a minimal project that includes a number of different things. And let's just quickly walk through some of the files within our solution. If you expand References, you'll see that References includes a Windows library for JavaScript 1.0 and includes CSS files for a dark and light UI, as well as some built-in JavaScript files. It includes a CSS folder that includes default.css that's used in the default.html page for the visual design of that page. It also includes a series of images, and these images are represented in different ways. For example, the logo and small logo images are displayed in your start screen, while the store logo PNG is used to represent your app in the Windows Store. And finally, splash screen PNG, which is used to show your app when it starts. It also includes a JS folder for all of your JavaScript files. By default, this includes default.js, a default.html page, which is a basic HTML page that we'll be editing in just a second, and finally, there's package.appx manifest. This is a manifest file that describes your app, including its name, the description used in the app, title, start page, splash screen, and all the images we saw before, and lists all of the files that your app contains. These files are essential to all Windows Store apps using JavaScript, and any project that you create in Visual Studio contains them. Step two, launch the app. At this point, we've created a very simple app. And if you want to see what it looks like, you can either press F5 on your keyboard to, to build, deploy, and start your app, or you can click right here, this button, to run it on your local machine. There's our splash screen, and there's the page loaded. That's that default.html page that just contains the text, content goes here. There's no button or command to close the app. So to close the app, what we're going to do is slide from the top edge with my mouse, and you see the cursor turns into a hand, and just slide it down towards the bottom edge of the screen, or press Alt F4. Now that we're in the Start screen, notice that deploying the app adds its tiles to the last group on the Start screen. To run the app again, tap or click its tile on the Start screen. And of course, we can press F5 in Visual Studio as well. It doesn't do much yet, but congratulations, you've built your first Windows Store app. Step three, modify your Start page. 
Let's switch back to Visual Studio, click Alt-Tab, and in Solution Explorer, select default.html, and go ahead and double-click it to open it. To make it easier to see this code, I'm just going to increase our font size here to 140%, and you can always use the mouse wheel with click mouse wheel to increase the size. And let's close just by hitting the close here, our output window, to give us as much space as possible. Within our HTML tag, we have some head tags that include links to JavaScript files, CSS files, and so on, including ones specifically to our project. What we're going to do, though, is add some HTML tags into the, in between the body tags. And here's the default.html page that Visual Studio created for us. Like any normal HTML page, there's an HTML tag surrounding everything, a head tag that includes links to CSS files, as well as JavaScript files, and then links to our specific project, default.css and default.js, that we'll be changing later. For now, what we're going to be doing is adding just regular HTML tags into our body tag to be able to have a user input some text and have a button click event. So let's add a first level heading for our title, and we'll say, hello world. Underneath that, we'll use a paragraph tag and just say, what's your name? And from here, we can just add regular HTML input, and I'll say input, and let's just call this ID name input. And the type will be text. And this is where users can actually input some text. And we'll add a button, and let's just call that hello button. And we'll say hello. All right, so there's our button control. And let's add a div here. And this is going to be the output of our click event, greeting output. And we'll use this a little later. So in the button click event, we can actually display it by setting the inner text of this greeting output div. So what we've done is replace the body with some large text hello world with the paragraph tag that includes just what's your name. And right next to each other will be an uh, input text box as well as a button click event labeled hello. And there'll be nothing displayed here, but we'll be adding that in later steps. And go ahead and click F5 or, or run here so we can see what it looks like. So there's our page. We see our big text. And notice if we just type anything here, nothing actually happens. Hello. Nothing actually happens. In our next step, we'll go ahead and add the event handler. Now let's switch back to Visual Studio and click the Stop button. Next is step four, create an event handler. Now that we've written our HTML code, what we want to do is go back to your Solution Explorer, expand JS, and double click on the default.js file to open it. Like before, I'm going to just expand this to 140% so you can easily follow along. To see as much of this code as possible, I'm going to be using a Visual Studio command called full screen, and that's Shift Alt Enter or under the Quick Launch menu up here. You can just start typing in, if you don't know Visual Studio commands, full screen. And you'll see our full screen is Shift Alt Enter. And I'll go ahead and click that. And notice this just gives us as much space as possible to see all the code within default.js. And the first thing we want to do here is just right click. And we're just going to use Outlining Collapse to Definitions. Outlining Collapse to Definitions. And what this does is just collapses everything so that we can easily see all of the different functions within our file. Now, the first thing to notice is all of our code is actually wrapped up in an anonymous function that is self-executing. And we know that because of the parens here. And the reason for this is because it makes it easier to avoid naming conflicts or situations where you accidentally modify a value that you didn't intend to. As you may remember, JavaScript variables can be either local or global. We want to make sure local variables, meaning variables declared in functions, don't interfere with the global namespace. So that's why all of the variables within here and all of the functions are declared within this function to make them local instead of global. The next line of code turns on strict mode for JavaScript. And strict mode provides additional error checking for your code. For example, it prevents you from using implicitly declared variables or assigning a value to a read-only property. As you can see, default.js also handles the unactivated and on checkpoint events. We go into more detail about these events later. For now, just know that the activated event fires when your app starts. Now, what we're going to do is after app.start is define our own function. And what we're going to do 
is define our own JavaScript function right before app.start. We're going to define a function named button click handler. And let's write the function definition. If, if I start typing fun, I'll see if I click code snippet for function, I hit tab twice. And now this is just a fill in the blank for button click handler. I'll click enter. And let's also make sure that button click handler has a parameter named event info. With Windows 8, you don't need to worry about the differences between touch, mouse, and other forms of pointer input. You can just use events that you know, like the click event, and they work for all forms of input. And the first thing we're going to do is we'll create a variable named username, and that'll retrieve what the user actually typed into that text box. So we'll use document.getElementById, and if you remember, our text box was named nameInput, and we want the value. So now that we know what the user has typed into that text box, the next thing we're going to do is build a greeting. Now let's build our greeting. We'll call this var greeting string equals hello. And we'll use our variable for username. We're just concatenating strings here to display back whatever the user typed into the text box, uh, wrapped in hello with an exclamation mark. Now that we've built the message we want to display, to display it, we're going to use document.getElementById, and we're going to find the greeting output div that we built earlier, and we'll set the inner text property equal to that string. So when this function is called, we'll get whatever the user typed into the text box, put it to the username, we'll build a custom greeting string that is hello, whatever the user typed in, an exclamation mark, and then we'll display it back to the user by setting the inner text property of the greeting output div. Now that we've created the button click event handler, we have to register this function a call when the button's actually clicked. Step five, register the event handler when our app launches. To register this button click handler, you may be tempted to go back to your default.html file and use the onClick event to call the button event handler. Now one reason you can't do that is because it doesn't have a reference to the name. And that's because, as we explained earlier, this is all wrapped within an anonymous function. So there's no way for the event handler to be able to call button click handler. To do this, there's two ways. We can either define this in the global namespace by writing some code to define button click handler in our global namespace, or the preferred way is to add an event listener on app.onActivated. And that's what we're going to show next. So let's expand the onActivated function. The code checks to see what type of activation occurred. In this example, it's checking for activation kind of launch. And the launch activation is used when an app is launched whenever it is not running, and then a user activates it. Next, the code checks to see how the app was shut down the last time it ran. If the app's been newly launched, this code will execute. Otherwise, it's been reactivated from suspension, and this else will launch. And we'll cover this in much more detail in the Manage App Lifecycle and State tutorial. Whether it's been terminated or not, we're going to make a call to set promise winjs ui.processall. This function scans your default.html file for Windows Library for JavaScript controls and initializes them. So far, we haven't added any of these controls, but in step 7, we'll be adding a rating control that requires this winjs ui.processall to initialize the control. Now the call to process all is enclosed in a set promise method. This will make sure that the splash screen isn't taken down until the apps page is ready. Now a good place to register our event handlers for non-Windows library for JavaScript controls is just after the call to winjs ui.processall. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to register our button click event. So let's add a comment here saying what we're going to do. We're going to retrieve the button and register our event handler. To do that, we'll get a reference to our button named hello button equals, and we'll say document.getElementById. And if you remember, we called our button hello button. Now that we have our button, we can say hello button and use add event listener. And this takes a couple different parameters. The first type is a click event. And now is where we point to our function, and that function is the button click handler. 
Next, we're going to set the use capture boolean. We're going to set the use capture boolean to false. And what that's going to do is have it instead fire to our target element and then its parent. If we want to fire to the parent first, we'd set it to true. Let's switch out of full screen mode and go ahead and click F5 or click the button to run our app. Now that our app is loaded, let's just type in, say, somebody special. We'll click say hello. Our event listener fires, displays our message, somebody special, with exclamation mark on the end. Now let's alt tab back to Visual Studio and go ahead and click stop. Step six, style our start page. Let's switch back to default.html and notice that we have a style sheet UI.darkCSS declared in WinJS reference. This is a Windows library for JavaScript style sheet, and it includes a set of styles that automatically give our app the Windows 8 look and feel. And by using this style sheet, you get a number of benefits, including being able to work great with touch displays, automatic support for high contrast modes, automatic support for other languages, and automatic support for other reading orders, like right to left. And as you may remember, these style sheets were declared in Windows Library for JavaScript. Under our CSS, we have both a UI dark and a UI light. What we're going to do is change our file to point to the UI light CSS so we can see the visual difference just by changing the CSS. To do that, make sure you're in default.html, and we'll just change the name of this to UI light. With that one simple change, go ahead and click Run, and let's see what our application looks like now. As you can see, this did a number of changes. Obviously, our background color is now white, our fonts are darker, and even our button color changed. Now, which style sheet should you use? This really depends on what you want. For apps that mostly display images or video, we recommend using the dark style sheet. And for apps that contain a lot of text, we recommend using the light style sheet. Now, if you want to customize the look and feel of your app, you don't have to throw out the Windows library for JavaScript styles and start over from scratch. It's easy to make incremental changes by overriding the styles you want to change. So let's switch back to Visual Studio. Let's stop our app. And you can override any style in the default style sheet by creating your own style sheet and including it after the Windows library for JavaScript style sheet. Now, the blank app template already does this for you by defining a default.css style sheet. And we'll be building our custom style sheets in just a second. Before that, we actually need to define some classes within our HTML body. Let's define a class for our header named header class. And next, what we want to do is define a div tag and wrap everything within it. So I'm just going to take this end tag and put it at the very end of our file, even after greeting output. To make this a little easier to read, go ahead and select this div. Right click and select Format Selection. And that'll just do some nice indenting to make it really clear what we're defining. Now within this div, let's go ahead and call this a class equal main content. Next, let's define the styles for those classes. And we'll do that in Solution Explorer. Go ahead and under CSS, double click on default.css to open that file. And we'll select 140% to just zoom in here and get a better view. And notice the generated file contains a few subs for defining styles for different views that are used within a Windows Store app. We'll ignore these subs for now, but we'll play with them in a later tutorial. Now, after the body style, let's define our classes. And the first one we'll define is our header class. And in these styles, we're going to be defining some of the app page default margins. First thing we'll do is set the top margin. And we'll set that with margin top. We're going to set that to 45 pixels from the top for the header, as well as a left margin. And that left margin will be 120 pixels from the left. Now, for main content, what I'll do is just copy paste this within here. And let's make sure this is nicely formatted. For main content, we'll have a top margin of 31 pixels. We'll keep a left margin of 120, and then a bottom margin as well of 50 pixels. Next, let's define a style for our greeting output. So we'll just call the style greeting output. And within here, we're going to define a height of 20 pixels. We'll also set the bottom margin. Do that with margin bottom. And we'll set that to 40 pixels. Now that we've set these properties, let's go ahead and click F5 or run it again. And we see the different spacing. Instead of our text being on top of each other, we see uh, all the different values. And let's go ahead and just add somebody special to run our app again. Say hello. There we see hello, somebody special. 
Now let's switch back to Visual Studio and go ahead and click Stop. Step 7, add a Windows library for JavaScript control. So far in this tutorial, we've been using standard HTML controls, but you can also use Windows library for JavaScript controls. And these are pre-built controls, like a date picker, a flip view, a list view, and a rating control that you can add to your app. So what we're going to do is just click on our default.html file and just double click it to open it and we're going to add a rating control to our page. So let's full screen this and underneath our greeting output div we're going to add a label control. We'll set the 4 and we'll call this rating control div. And within here let's just call this rate this greeting. Now that we have a label to actually build our rating control, it's a little different than what you'd normally expect. Instead of adding a rating element to our page, the way we build these JavaScript controls is by adding a div tag and setting the data win control property to the specific name of the control. So let's do that. Let's call it div ID equals, and we'll call this rating control div just so we can reference it later. And now set the data win control, data win control property equal to, and notice we do get IntelliSense in here, winjs.ui.ratingControl. I'll exit out of full screen, let's go ahead and just run this again. And there's our rating control, as well as our label. We can set these values, and now let's add some code to this. Go back to Visual Studio and click Stop. Step 8, register an event handler for a Windows library for JavaScript control. Registering an event handler for a Windows library for JavaScript control is a little different than registering an event handler for a standard HTML control. Now the first thing we're actually going to do is add a new div, and this div is going to display the output from the rating control. So we'll just call it rating output. Now let's switch to our default JS, and what we're going to do is at the bottom of our file, but before app start, we're going to add a new function, and this function is going to be called rating changed. So let's declare the function, rating changed, and within here let's make sure to actually pass in event info as a parameter. Now the event info parameter contains a detail.tentative rating property that provides the new user rating. So what we'll do is get a reference to our div, let's do that first, var rating output equals, and we'll use the document get element by ID. And this is the div that we just added, named rating output. Now that we have that, we want to set the inner text of it, rating output dot inner text equal to event info dot detail dot tentative rating. Now that we've declared this function, we actually need to call it when the rating changes. And what we'll do is go back up to our on activated event and we'll show some of the unique things we need to do for Windows Library for JavaScript controls. Now, if rating were a standard HTML control, we could add our event handler directly after the call to process all, just like we did with our button event handler. But it's a little more complicated for a Windows Library for JavaScript control, like our rating control. And since the process all method is asynchronous, any code that follows it might run before process all actually completes. So what we're going to do is use a promise object to receive notification when the process all completes. Now a promise is a promise that something will happen in the future and when that thing happens the promise is said to have completed. And promise objects have a then method. So if we see here directly on our code and in between these two parentheses we're going to add a dot then. And what this does is it's going to say any code within here and we'll build a quick function called completed will execute after the call to process all is completed. There's our method decoration. Let's build two tags. And we want to make sure to push all of our code within here. So let's push our existing code directly within this completed method. Now I'm going to add another parentheses here. I want to make sure that we have a parentheses for the setPromise method. So all of this is within setPromise. So if we select this character, then we see this parentheses is all the code that will happen within the, the then. Then finally the bracket is the declaration for the function completed. And what we'll do is add some code to get a reference to our rating control and then use add event listener to call our function. 
First, what I'm going to do is retrieve the div that hosts the rating control. Let's build a variable for this, and we'll call it retrieve control div. And we'll find it by using document.getElementById. And what we're looking for is the name of the div is rating control div. Now that we have that, what we're going to do next is retrieve the actual rating control. And let's just call it rating control equals rating control div. That's the control we just found. And we'll say dot win control. And that's a reference to the actual rating control. Once we have that, we can actually register our event handler. And, we'll and now let's set rating control dot add event listener. And the event we're looking for is the change event. The function we're going to use is rating change. And for our use capture, we'll just set that to false. So let's review what we've done. We added the process all and added the then method, which takes a function. And what's going to happen is the process all is going to run. And once it's complete, it's going to call our completed function. Now within our completed function, we get a reference to the div, rating control div, that is hosting the rating control. We retrieve the actual rating using the win control. And within the win control, what we can do is add an event listener to the change event, passing in our function. And so there's our code. Let me just eliminate some of these lines. And we'll go ahead and just click Run. And let's add some text here. Someone special for our name. We'll click Say Hello. We'll select our greeting of 4. And notice our text box now fire that change event for the rating control and set the div to that tentative rating. Congratulations, you've completed part one, create a Hello World app. In part two, manage app lifecycle and state, we'll discuss the app lifecycle and show how to store app data in Windows roaming settings and session state data using the WinJS application session state object. Mm -hmm.